When creating CI-CD pipelines, we use these steps to perform some specific tasks. But we can also use the jobs and the stages. A job is a collection of multiple tasks and the stages is a collection of multiple jobs. One of the use cases for using these is like when I have a front-end and a back-end application, I can compile both applications at the same time in parallel. So at this case, I might use two jobs, one to build the front-end application and the second job to build the back-end application. And I can have both jobs working as part of the same uh, stage that I can call it the, in here the build stage, for example. And then I can have a second stage where I have multiple jobs for building or for deploying the application to the uh, dev environment and a second job for deploying that backend application to the dev environment. And they can have a third stage to say, this is the stage that we go to deploy my application into production. Typically within Azure DevOps, when we use the GUI designer to create our pipelines, the one to create the build pipelines, for example, we can have only one stage, but that is composed of mul multiple jobs. And all of these jobs can run in parallel. Here I have an example for a pipeline that will go to build the web application. For that, it will use the .NET tools and analysis tools and testing for that web application. And another a job that will go to build the database file. In my case, it's SQL Server database, so I can build it using MS Build right here. And then for an another a job, it will go to to uh, run or to build actually the project for my UI, te UI test, then publish the RM template and publish the Pister tests, for example. So all of these jobs can run in parallel. When I translate this pipeline into a YAML pipeline in Azure DevOps, I'll get a result like this one here, where I get this YAML pipeline. So here I specify the jobs that I want to run, and I give a name for each, for each job, a display name, and I specify on which a build agent that will run and then the variables that will be shared across all the tasks under this job. So here for the steps or for the tasks, I have the one for using .NET CLI, for running PowerShell script, for using Sonar in order to run code analysis scan and then building the application and so on. And then I have a second job for the database, this one that is the one that will go to use MS Build in order to build my database project. And then another job for Selenium to build the uh, Selenium project. And because with the UI or with the GUI designer, we make that, diff that split between the build and the release pipelines. Here, if I go to see the release pipeline, you will see that here I have actually multiple stages in this case. And for each of these stages, for example, deploying my application to dev environment, deploying to test and deploying to production environment, in each one of these, I can have actually one or multiple jobs. So let's check the one for deploying to dev, for example. And this here, I have only one job, but I, can, I could also have added another job right here. And they can do that by clicking on add a job agent and that will add a new job here. And then I can go to add multiple tasks right here, this one, for example. And because I consider this as my release pipeline here, what I'm doing is that I'm trying to deploy my application to that dev environment. For that, I'm creating that environment using ARM template and then that ARM template will create a web app and the database for me. So I'll go to deploy that web app into my dev environment and then deploy the database. And after that, I go to run some Selenium UI tests to make sure my app runs uh, as expected. And for the other environments, I'm already, I'm almost doing the same thing. So for my test environment, I'm doing almost the same deploy where I'm deploying my application to that test environment. And then I'm adding some web uh, performance testing. And for my production environment, I'm also doing the same, deploying the ARM template, then deploying my application. I have some other couple of environments that I use for uh, testing. The one for pre-prod, for example, for testing the database migration and the AZSK in order to run uh, analysis for my Azure subscription and my Azure resources. 
These build and release stages were defined in the GUI designer, but we can also define them into the YAML pipeline. So here I have this sample YAML pipeline for my uh, web app with the database demo uh, available on GitHub, where here you can take a look at this Azure pipeline, CICD YAML pipeline. This one actually will define multiple stages. So I'll have here a build stage that will go to build my web app into a separate job. So all the tasks inside this job will go to do exactly that. So they will go to build that uh, web app, run some code, and uh, static code analyzing, analyzes use, using Sonar uh, Cloud, and then another job for building that database. So as we have seen before, but in addition to those stages, we, we get here another stage for deploying the application into the dev environment. And for that, we have one job here that will do exactly that. So it will go to deploy that Atom template into my Azure subscription, and then it will go to uh, test my resources there. Once that's done, now we'll go to deploy the application into the other environments. Let's say here, for example, deploying to the test environment and to the production environment. Here I kept them empty, but you get the idea. And if you find this example a little bit more complicated, let's move to a more simplified example, where here I have a sample YAML pipeline that uses multiple stages, jobs, and tasks or steps. So let's understand what is the relation between these two, three things. So stages in our YAML pipeline, we can define one or multiple stages. And stages by default, they will run in sequence, not in parallel. So here I have this first a stage that is for building the web application. And then I have a second stage for deploying into the dev environment and a third stage for deploying into my production environment. Let's take a look at the first stage, for example, that have the display name build apps. This one will define multiple jobs. So here I have a job for building the front end and a second job for building the back end application. For building the front end, uh, here I'm just uh, putting some steps, those could be one or more steps in, in each job. So these steps, they will go to build your, your application. Here I'm just showing sample script, but you get the idea about what you should add as a task right here, tasks to uh, build your, uh, your java.net, python or whatever type of application you have. Then I have another job that is for building the uh, backend application. Here I have used, for example, these two jobs to say these two jobs could run in parallel. Okay, stages cannot run in parallel. They typically run in sequence, but for jobs, they, by default, they will run in parallel unless you say this job depends on the first job, for example, using the depend uh, keyword that you can add right here with depends on. So during the build up, I'm building my web application and then I'm building my uh, backend application. Once that's done, after that, I can move to deploy to the dev environment, where here again, I'm specifying multiple jobs, one job to deploy the front end into the dev environment and the second job to deploy the back end into the dev environment. And from the deploy to production environment, I'm as the name suggested, so here I'm deploying the same application into my uh, production environment. But note here that I'm running these uh, stages uh, or these uh, jobs from a separate node pool, and they can do that actually from different uh, stages. So basically here I'm using by default the VM image Ubuntu latest for all my stages, unless I specify that I want to use another uh, VM image, like in this case here. So the idea behind having stages and also different jobs in your CI/CD pipeline is to help you to give you like a logical separation between your tasks. So in this example, it was like building one stage for building the application, one stage for deploying to dev, one stage for deploying to production. But in other examples, depending on your use cases, those stages could be used for other purposes. For example, that could be a stage for running infrastructure tests in Windows machines, for example, another stage for running a tests inside a Linux machine, for example, or that could be also deploying an application to an Azure region number one, and then another stage for deploying the same application into another Azure uh, region, and so on. So the uh, 
possibilities are actually lots of possibilities available for you and the limit is your imagination for how to use these stages. So let's go to run this stage for example and see how it will work here. Click run. And here with the new designer, I should be able to see the different stages, build apps, deploy to dev and deploy to prod. And they can also see the subsequent uh, jobs inside all of these uh, uh, stages. And they can also see all the jobs that are still running here. And they can navigate directly to the job for deploying to dev, for example. And here I can see now I have actually two jobs running in parallel. One for deploying the front end and the other one for deploying to back end. And you see the job for deploying to prod, it's still waiting for these two jobs to finish running. And once all runs successfully, we should see here all the stages and all the jobs with the subsequent jobs run it successfully. So if you want to take a look at this YAML pipeline that I've used today for the demo, you can find it in this GitHub repo stages-jobs-tasks, where here you get the source code for that uh, sample pipeline. If you are looking for more details about how to use stages and jobs here, I would recommend you, you go to the Azure DevOps documentation and Microsoft and docs.microsoft.com where here you will find more details about specifically how to use the dependencies and the conditions to say, for example, I don't want to run uh, the uh, pipeline unless I have some condition that is uh, set. And one condition here could be, for example, that the previous stage did run successfully and the trigger for this pipeline was the source branch from the master branch. And here I have the second link for how to use jobs and how to specify the dependencies and conditions, timeouts and running jobs in parallel. And between different jobs, as between different uh, stages, you can also pass parameters or variables. So here we are defining a parameter that is called skip subsequent, and then we want to uh, output this parameter right here, or we have the job number, uh, job B that depends on this uh, parameter to decide whether to run that job or not.